Hello people, Chris again. I'm at a really good place today. Can anyone guess where? I'll start walking away. This is all part of my Walks Along the Thames series. As I walk away, more will get seen, more will be revealed. So today, if you don't know already, I'm at Coal House Fort in Essex. Built in 1974 to keep the French out. <laughs> and today, myself, Stewie 18, my drone pilot, is here. I'm going to have a good old walkabout. It's not open to the public, but we can go around the outside and there is some interesting things to see. So we'll take you along with us. Uh, I've had a quick look on Google Earth just to see where stuff is, but I haven't looked into it because I don't really want... I want to see it first time when you see it on this video. And that's the whole idea of these walks along the Thames videos is let's go and walk from there to there and let's go and see what we can find. Yep, so everybody, welcome to Coal House. Yeah, a few years ago, I was walking around Shooters Hill looking at some of the old stuff around there and we was looking for a mortar spigot. A uh, mortar spigot was a big lump of concrete with a metal spike on the top that they'd put a mortar on top of, move it around, and then they could lift the mortar off, move it somewhere else and fire and move it around actually. So it's an old way of moving artillery around without wheels basically. So yeah, there's uh, two spigots here. There's probably spigots around the other side. But yeah, this is a, a mortar spigot. You see, absolutely solid. <laughs> Um, yeah, solid spigots, they load low the machine onto this, the gun or whatever, or the mortar, and then you'd have 360 fire all the way around the spigot. You can see inside it's all concrete and yeah, built to last day. Yeah, mortar spigot. See if you can find any of your local parts because they're all over London and all over the country probably. I wonder how many urban explorers have been through that. <laughs> it's just like uh, rifle slots on this side. Very nice, very nice indeed. A bit like sort of, I don't know, like you could climb up it. <laughs> Strange how they've, uh, unless they've just worn away like that, how they're sticking out like that. Yeah, I suppose when you got to the top, you'd be in trouble if you did climb it. I like this. This is nice. Really nice. You see how big it is by Stewie over there? Big old fort. We decided today we're going to go around this way. So let's take you with us.
Oh, that's some pillbox. Look at that. This is massive. It's all locked up though. It's a shame. Full of beer cans like they always are. This one's a uh, two story. It's got like a, a ladder inside down there. Oh, interesting. Show me about the beer cans. Another entrance just there. Very cool. And then you've got the upstairs up there. So upstairs slots as well. Two story. Brilliant. And just here, we've got the ladder that goes up the stairs. Yeah, so even though it's not open to the public at the moment because they're uh, restoring it all, they've got a load of volunteers working in there. But you can st there's still a lot to see on the outside. We are going to walk around the top parapet shortly in a while. But yeah, there is other bunkers to see. There's the moat and there's some sort of blast wall over here. I'm going to go and have a quick look at. Yeah, I'm going to have a look at that. I'm going to have a look in this flooded bunker as well. Well, we're going in, but it's very small, oh it's very small, right, what I'm going to have to do is go back out and put a bit of lamp on to see the inside of this, so you get back through the front of <laughs> right, let's get me torch out. It's very small, as you can see, it's got these racks in still, I don't know what this will be for, I don't know, but it's very smelly in this one, very smelly, I mean, it's not very small, could have had a door on it, yeah. tiny, tiny one. Right, let's get out of there, I think so. There's a lookout, one of the lookout points. Lots of barbed wire. And all the gun ports are down there, buried. Probably got magazines underneath as well, like most of the other forts along the Thames. I would say this fort has got one of the best views ever out of all the forts I've ever been to. You can see for miles and miles and miles. So this was probably the massive stronghold as it came in. And you'd have to get past this fort. And then Tilbury Fort would start them, and Shawmead would start them, and Cliff Fort would start them. And all the other forts that I've not been to yet would start them. You know? Each gun was a four and a half mile 
range which would easily reach the other side of the river and they have to go past all this there wouldn't have been these trees here either and you could just see for miles right the way over to sort of grain Sheppey, all the way over that way brilliant what a place can't wait for this home it's going to be a few years i think all right let's uh crack on round the sun's coming out i'm getting a bit warm now but yeah this is uh quality let's go Some sort of gun up on there, can't get it though. Yeah, can't get it. Never mind. Just a quick update as well. Coming to the channel in the next week or so, we've got a Hover Air X1 coming. So I don't trust myself with normal drones. I'll just crash one and I'd lose a thousand pound. What's the point? So I've got a Hover Air X1 coming. I'm not going to do a review on it, loads of other people have already done it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use it for B-roll just to put bits and bobs in my videos. So something like this, I could do a take off and take away photo and I'll be able to see inside the fort a little bit. Not as good as a drone. But yeah, it's not supposed to be as good as a drone, So, but they're supposed to be quite good. So do you know what? A bit of investment, why not? Right, let's crack on. Naughty Stuart's gone under the barrier, but don't tell no one. Naughty, naughty Stuart. I wonder what he's seen. If he'd have walked down the other side, he wouldn't have had to go through the barrier. <laughs> what a brilliant place. Right, let's go down and have a look and see what Stuart's found. Yeah, so just here, you can see where they've blocked the door in. How long ago did they block this door in? That's crazy. That's it, crazy. And there's another window down here. You can see into the fort. Just here you can see the full size of one of these casemates. They're absolutely massive compared to the other forts I've been to. These are a lot bigger. Would have had a lot bigger guns. Look at that steel plate on the front of bolted on. Crazy. And that's 10 foot up from me. They are massive. They've got to be 10 foot high, 12 foot across, something like that. That is massive. Imagine a big gun would have been in there. And the noise. Wow. Right. Let's have a look in here, eh? Oh, right, right, okay. I know what this is. Oh, I can smell it. It's the tunnel. Magazine tunnel. York stone floors. Yeah, this is the magazines. Wow, you can really smell like a like an old diesel smell. You always get the smell on these. 
Oh, that's amazing. That's nice. They just leave you that little bit of temptation, don't they, to visit? <laughs> and you've got a massive blast wall goes around the front to protect the front of the casemate. Crazy. <clears throat> Brilliant place. Right people, let's go over and have a look at these East Tilbury gun batteries. Yeah. Just spoke to a really interesting guy, local guy, and he said that the fort was managed by a load of uh, volunteers for ages and they spent part of what they spent, £30,000 on the disabled access ramp and then they closed them down. Absolutely unbelievable. So hopefully he sees this, what a lovely fort you've got, what a lovely bit of history you've got here. Yeah, just such a shame. Hopefully we might be able to come back one day and have an arranged visit with the warden. So yeah, if that goes ahead, I'm going to promote this place. Right, let's have a look in here then, eh? This looks fun. A little slippery. This is the little storage areas for the ammunition, something built a fire in it. Well done. And then up here. Point. Put some more storage bins there for the ammunition. And then here, we've got another view out into the river. all the uh, metal grate inside the concrete. And the old rails, the old railings. And further on up there, we've got an outlook post. So we're going to go and take a look at that next. But yeah, this reminds me a bit of a main dummy fort. Something with a building underneath, I think. I don't know if you can get into it or not. Let's have a look though. There is something down there. Gotta go and have a look, people. Right, hopefully, it's a tunnel. Might just be an old doorway. I'm gonna have a look anyway, ain't ya? Mm. Oh, interesting. Full of rubbish. Yeah, yeah. And it goes in this far, probably a little storage area. 
safe keeping of ammunition, I should think. I've got all the marks around the walls where they would have maybe put gunpowder or something like that. Yeah, cool little block. Right, let's climb back out. <laughs> Nice. Built in 1940-41, disguised as a water tower, the radar tower housed Type 287 radar operators associated with the detection of surface vessels on the river, possibly including submarines. Rather than aircraft, it almost certainly had a role in assisting Allied shipping through the minefield into the channel and had a range of 10 miles. The radar equipment was operated by the Royal Navy and Royal Marines guarded the tower. It is now a rare survivor of this type of system. Wonderful. So the idea of these walks is to go to different places along the Thames. So what we're doing is uh, we've gone way past Coal House Fort now, past the radar station. And we're going up, we can see some structures up near the river up this way. Uh, could be sort of like bunkers, anything like that. So we're going to go and have a look, see what it is. So we're going to follow this path all the way along and crack on along to where that them rocks come out and there's some structures down there so yeah bring back soon good book this
So sometimes it's worth doing that extra bit of walk just to see what we got. Oh, okay. Yeah, this one's in a bad state. A very bad state. Yeah. This one's a sim better days. There's the radar tower where we was. So yeah, we've walked all this way. Look at the slab of concrete. If you don't walk here, you won't know what's here, will you? All right, let's go and see where that structure is. So Stewie's just found these. Just back there, looks like an old Victorian dumping ground on the foreshore. Yeah, nice bottles. Probably perfume, medicine, something like that. But that one there's the nicest one. That's the hand blown one. Yeah, that one's I like that. Yeah, I like that. That's really nice. Very nice. Right, let's see what else we can find. I don't know what this is, but it's in better days. Got concrete and wings on top there. Maybe a bit of a pier or something. Don't know. Not much left of it anyway. Works and stuff. Yeah, so we're going to go back to that Victorian dumping ground and see if we can find any more than bolts. He actually gifted me the hand blown one. So thank you so much, Stuart. I'm going to clean that up and put that in my shack. I like it. It's got a little cork on it, maybe. Brilliant, thank you. Happy days. Well, there we are people, the old Victorian dumping ground. I think Victoria it might be uh, newer than that, we don't know. But there's a hell of a lot here. Look at this lot. Looks like people have dug them up and just left them. They're nice. Some new stuff and some old stuff. Some very interesting stuff. Nice. Might have a look through and see what there is. Right, found a nice little green one. I'm gonna take it home and clean that up. See what it comes out like. We left hundreds more for other people to find. Wonderful. Right people, that's another one off the list. Cold last fort is done. Thanks for joining us. I'll see you all soon. Cheers all. Bye now. <laughs>